सेम सो सो इज इट ए सीवियर पलवनी आर्टीरियल हाइपर टेंशन वेर यू हैव टू बी वरीड टेल मी टेल मी दिस इज ओनली वन थिंग विच वेर ऑलवेज कन्फ्यूजन इज देयर सो विल यू कॉल इट सीवियर पलवनी हाइपर टेंशन वेयर यू नीड टू बी वरीड so you know that pulmonary hypertension has two form what are those pulmonary hypertension has a obstructive variety a uh, a uh, hyperkinetic variety so when baby is born then pulmonary vasculature is very having high resistance so that time you will not get so much of flow across the vst because uh, the pulmonary vasculature is obstructing that flow but pa pressures are high so if you go and take a vsd gradient it will be hardly any so when it is there then uh, you should not be worried because only thing is this pa pressure which is high already will drop down in 48 to 72 hours which we see in ecg what what we see change in the ecg after 72 hours because are we huh? are we uh, the the uh, ha t t t wave changes right so t is upright and then it goes uh, um, reverse huh? so uh, this is because of change in rv pressure <coughs> so <laughs> this pressure is destined to become normal around 1 to 2 weeks but if it is a vsd there and continuously it's pushing blood on the circulation it is not going up but pressure is definitely transmitted then pulmonary vasculature will start resisting and that pressure will go down after 6 week so uh, then you don't have heart failure in first few weeks that's why don't worry whenever there is a large vsd in first few weeks we don't ask for any decongestive therapy we just think that keep a watch there are few patients who were present with the early fall in pulmonary vascular resistance what are those situation particularly a patient develops some kind of uh, need for hospitalization and given oxygen so pulmonary vasculature pulmonary resistance will fall very fast and then there will be increased pulmonary blood flow and then a whole havoc will start and everybody will be thinking what should we do because patient is deteriorating with only oxygen therapy so these are the uh, situations but in normal babies uh, the parents will come ki bachcha jab paida hua tha tab to kisi ne bataya nahi ki vst hai nahi bata sakte bhai tab murmur hi nahi generate hua kyun nahi generate hua because wo oh, there was pressure similar pressure on right side on left side there was no shunting happening there was no murmur so that is how it happens these are the few important point which you must understand so i think i explained and if you want to know anything about it i will further explain you are fine with this explanation so this is pulmonary arterial hypertension which happens in the first few days of life is a obstructive variety but it's a reversible or obstructive variety because after few days 4 weeks 5 weeks 6 8 weeks this will fall so then it becomes a hyperkinetic what is hyper what is difference between hyperkinetic and obstructive what is the biggest difference what is the difference between two that's great so the thing is the one obstructive variety one which is the reversible in early days and other another uh, stage of life which is presenting with irreversible changes but both ways there is pressure in the pulmonary vasculature but there is no flow less flow the qpqs remain same but once the uh, hyperkinetic pulmonary hypertension settles in then it becomes a hyperkinetic means increased pulmonary blood flow so you are having systemic aortic pressure in the pulmonary artery and you are also having pulmonary blood flow <coughs> increased in lungs
So that is the reason, that is the case. If hard a patient, if somebody is calling me that my patient is not feeding well, my baby is not feeding well, not get, getting vein, uh, weight, so I'm happy. Because even six month old child, if he's having heart failure, that means he is operable. Because if a patient with large VST is happy, healthy, and everybody is happy that he is growing well, is a bad sign. Because there is somehow, there is some mechanism that uh, irreversibility of pulmonary arterial hypertension obstructive variety is settling in early. So that is the difference between two. So this is very important thing to know because uh, these are the basic question and we are learning only basic. So <coughs> why evaluation that I told you, uh, there is lot of disability involved, we have to do it in right time. And uh, we know VSD and all those things. This is a graph which shows that uh, initial few days high mortality pooling and then subsequently in 30, 40 years again mortality is high. Then uh, you know classification of uh, CSD that you know, I think Dr. Neeraj has covered it, isn't it? I, I came late, uh, so you know, but the most important as Dr. Munish said, pulse oximeter remains the, uh, this visi uh, visibility of cyanosis one should not look for, this is for sure. <coughs> then uh, most important thing is, HRVSD, HRSD means hemodynamically significant disease where intervention you need early. Hemodynamically insignificant disease, no need for intervention and there may be a third variety where because of complication, you may need uh, intervention otherwise it's not required. Uh, you should actually try your uh, internet. You know this parameter uh, Z score, RM mode, Z score, uh, wala, uh, site yehi likho ke aajayega, hai na? Do you know that? You should have that, hai na? Then, Doppler cardiac output calculator. <coughs> you can calculate it directly from machine, but it is very easy, like you are sitting and uh, having four values and you get your uh, uh, cardiac output and Doppler QPQS calculator. So all these three calculator, you have four things only, Doppler, QP, QS calculator. So we'll see that, what, what is that? And similarly, cardiac output. So you just have those value and put in your thing. So you have quantification. That is what is my topic. So <coughs> never forget to take SpO2 blood pressure in all four limbs at least once. So this is very important because uh, Dr. Munish was showing very important uh, differential cyanosis in a case where the PDA was then subsequent uh, slide she showed that it could have been a coarctation of aorta where duct was shunt, uh, was post coarct area, post coarct area. So then uh, the systemic blood flow was coming from the <coughs> uh, from the pulmonary circulation directly. So th uh, that is the uh, that is why uh, if you go for pulse oximeter, uh, this thing, so they say the upper and lower limb, difference of three, five, ten, ten is very, very suggestive, three and ten, the, uh, three and five are also very suggestive. So, but most important thing is whenever you do it, temperature, waveform, adequate contact and clinical evaluation is very important. Sometimes sister will come and say 75% saturation and you are looking at baby is pink. So this happens often. Huh? So these are the, uh, I told you about the pressures. Uh, uh, these are the areas, various, see the, this is pressure and these are the saturation. And I'm very sure that you all know it. We know systemic circulation is more than 96%, no? And pressure as we, uh, this is the around six to 12 LVDP. And here you can see the systolic is 120 or maybe 100 for the <coughs> children, 15, 20, 225 is RV. So it, this much pressure is, has been taken by this interventricular septum. And also there is a sharing wall between the MPA and aorta. And you know how they share this wall? <coughs> 
because the position of your uh, like this aorta goes like this, then pulmonary artery like wraps around like this, just below the aortic valve. So this one wall of infundibulum and the LVOT is actually having a common wall. So that is the area where a VSD may happen. Our VSD may happen little beyond also, where uh, where the pulmonary artery and aorta directly are connected. Uh, that is called as aorto pulmonary window, or there may be persistent uh, this duct connection between this. And these are the pressure we must know that if a large gap is there, if in it is in this this area, we need not to bother because pressure is not transferred, volume is transferred. So usually even a split, wide and fixed split may not be seen in within first year of life. It, there is slow dilatation of RARV, slow dilatation of MPA. But, uh, and uh, surgery or any intervention is uh, offered after two years of age, mostly. But the other area, you have to go for between two to four months or two to six months. So that is how it is. So salient features suggest you of level and quantification of the uh, shunt. ASD, pulse and BP are usual. You don't get any clue from that. VSD, usual, don't get any clue from that. But duct and AP window, they are a bounding pulse and increased pulse pressure. RV type apex, ill-sustained heave. If it is well-sustained, then what would you think of? <coughs> pulmonary stenosis or pulmonary arterial hypertension. And the uh, LV apex, ill-sustained heave, LV dominance, and similar to the VSD. S2, S2 is very important in congenital heart disease. If it is a wide and fixed split, then <coughs> wide and fixed split, if it is a significant shunt, not PFO. PFO will not present with the wide and fixed split, as to wide and variable split. That means there is a difference between gap between A2 and P2 during the inspiration and expiration. And here, uh, because the <coughs> uh, blood is lost from, uh, from aorta into pulmonary artery, so uh, this, this is actually narrow split for the PDA. Then loudness of P2 is very important because if it is very loud, it always suggests pulmonary hypertension. But if it is with the no, uh, this wide, uh, with this wide and variable split for VSD, P2 is loud. The patient is fine is still. But <coughs> if it is with the ASD, this is a loud P2, and this wide and fixed split is there. Still, you cannot make out that it is a pulmonary arterial hypertension with the ASD are only ASD. So there we'll see other methods. And uh, then ejection systolic murmur at RVOT, flow murmur at RVOT. Why? Because a tricuspid valve, whatever volume is moving, if the amount is increased, then there will be a flow murmur. There is a turbulence. So that will be presenting with the rumble. And the, uh, in the VSD, you get same rumble on the mitral valve. The uh, VSD murmur is moderate. Uh, VSD, you get a uh, <coughs> pan-systolic murmur, a long systolic murmur, but mostly large VSD. So that you will get a uh, ejection systolic murmur, like uh, or a flow murmur, and a mid-diastolic rumble. So mostly this murmur will be heard both sides of his sternum. And if a doubly committed VSD is there, you will hear a murmur in the infraclavicular region. Continuous murmur is in the second space, infraclavicular region. RVST is present, LVST is present. So these are the suggestion of increased volume, and it's a good sign. Mid-diastolic rumble, mid-diastolic rumble, this is the uh, over the tricuspid valve, and this is mitral valve. So they are good sign. What is the suggestion of uh, Eisenmenger syndrome? If a loud P2 decrease in ejection systolic murmur, onset of a diastolic murmur, and <coughs> tricuspid regurgitation may start in a case of ASD when pulmonary hypertension is high. 
if <coughs> if uh, but here the x-ray will not show any difference uh, in the cardiac size the in uh, vst cardiomegaly which was there will decrease the narrow split p2 loud absence of integrate murmur and ejection uh, an early diastolic murmur similarly p2 loud murmur may be absent or low in grade the mid diastolic rumble will disappear so these are all shunt quantification from the secondary secondary features so these are the uh, clinical thing and we can actually so uh, line zero for us is the basal cubicles we take one whatever blood is on pulmonary similar to uh, similar is on left side right side cubicles left to right shunt uh, uh, more than more qp left to right shunt more uh, systemic blood flow is right to left shunt so this is the ecg here ecg you can always make out for a asd you expect the right atrium and right ventricular dilatation so uh, right ventricular dilatation so right axis deviation you can see the one and you can see the avf so you deep s so it takes your axis towards the beyond the 90 and it's also you get a rs rds pattern you uh, over here in v1 so right axis deviation rvs in a uh, primum you may have a uh, the extreme left axis deviation. So you can see the one and AVF is also negative. Then you can, uh, yeah, this is a ventricular septal defect. So uh, here you can see a ventricular septal defect, you will say that if blood is flowing from the left ventricle into right ventricle, so right ventricle should also enlarge but actually right ventricle takes brunt of flow and the pressure and it allows blood to flow in pulmonary circulation if pulmonary stenosis is not there so it only act like a conduit so this is the uh, so you get a biventricular hypertrophy and this is the and uh, this is known as cards vestal phenomena so if it is present that's a good sign and you see here AVF, so it's a left axis, right? <coughs> so pulmonary vascular wall thicken and resist blood flow in the lung. So so in this particular case, this is large VSD, and you can see uh, the uh, mostly blue color. So that is a right to left shunt, but part of it is left to right also. So this is a pulmonary hypertension. So that suggests that you are, uh, we are assessing PA pressure, so PA pressure are very high. And whenever we are thinking that PA pressure are very high with this blue color flow, we are saying that systolic, mean pressure, and diastolic pressure all are high. Because we talked about the pulmonary arterial hypertension systolic is part of any VST. You cannot challenge that. So what should not be high is the mean pressure and diastolic pressure. Till they are fine, your uh, patient is operable. So this is how their uh, natural history goes. So four to six week, uh, you are happy. Three to six week, you baby is puzzled. Six to nine months, sorry, three to six month. Six to nine month, baby become happy and you think the general, in general population will think that VSD is getting better. Nine to 12 is still better. And then beyond two years, uh, maybe sinosis establishes and this is how the pulmonary arterial changes first only there is a muscular media is affected and then intima is also affected and then thrombosis and intimal uh, proliferation everything is there This is the very interesting, uh, uh, this is a grade six mama and two baby. This is one baby and this is another baby. So which one is happy and which is not happy? I mean, uh, uh, I, I think I could not choose a better picture, but if you see here and a grade six murmur, 
and this kind of baby baby is happy so you always expect what what yeah. could be a huh? you expect that a uh, hemodynamically insignificant vsd mostly or pda also but if baby is little sick edema and all those things in a sick baby you get a very very loud murmur then what will you think no <laughs> in, in this small pulmonary arterial hyper then you should always think for in your nursery for the obstructive lesion severe pulmonary stenosis severe aortic stenosis you know so a sick child with a very loud murmur is a obstructive pathology which is a very serious thing you need to go for in uh, urgent intervention but if it is a happy child with a very loud murmur is mostly a, a hemodynamically insignificant shunt lesion not the asd asd never gives this so uh, shunt lesion everything depends on age size and location that is what i said that child is very small to call it a <coughs> so lung pressure you can always make a see i still believe in this ki x ray ecg and clinics makes a very provisional very wonderful provisional diagnosis you see that this is not a complex disease you see the cardiomegaly is there you see this is the what ra enlargement clearly ra enlargement okay then you see rpa is big and then but if you go here what is happening huh? so this is pruning because the distally uh, for very long the all vasculature was dilated like this but over the period of time this all get constricted so proximal remains the dilated and distal becomes pruning so this is how you make out that qpqs if you go to calculate for this case it will be 1 is to 1 or 1.2 is to 1 or maybe 0.9 but in this particular case it will be more than 1.5 i am also showing you this picture uh, uh, this is asd vsd pda and if you see the cyanosis both will present with the cyanosis but uh, this is a top and this is asd vsd pda so you see the difference in the this pulmonary segment and you can make out that this this goes for top physiology for adults this is very important thing and where you are not able to calculate the uh, rvot pressure uh, rvot uh, gradient so now coming to preterm pda this is another very important thing acha echo what are the salient features suggestive of the label and quantification of shunt so this is the asd if it is 6 to 8 mm then it will present with the rarv dilatation and so you get a dilated rarv so that it shows that this is a significant then asd flow remains laminar um, you have seen the smaller pfo is always turbulent so it remains laminar if pah is there then it may be a bidirectional or rv failure is there then also asd may be bidirectional as dr munesh said that there may be rv dysfunction and uh, rv edp is high then also you can get a bidirectional shunting shunt gradient in uh, asd you don't take rv function tricuspid regurgitation and ivc we need to see vsd a rough uh, uh, formula is aortic annulus if it is equal to aortic annulus definitely this vsd is bigger if this vsd is less than 1/3 it is smaller then uh, if vsd is associated with dilated la lv z score you have to see i showed you i told you the site from there you should take it so uh, the flow if it is laminar then you have to see the direction and predominant flow is going where and if it is lamin it is very laminar but uh, this is not dilated that means it is going towards the eisenmenger syndrome p2 <coughs> i am sorry <laughs> this came here and the uh shunt gradient is very important so for asd you don't take shunt gradient for vsd you take gradient so uh, what is the gradient cut off for vsd or pda ap window 
<laughs> so on average, if 100 is his systolic pressure, then the uh, gradient of 60 approximately makes your PA pressure systolic around 40. So that is okay. If it even 50, 55, then also it is borderline. But if it is around 20, 30, then you have to be very careful and close monitoring. Also, one should always remember while looking at this dilated LALV thing that what is happening to LV function is mitral regurgitation is there because it may be because of mitral regurgitation you are getting dilatation, but otherwise it is a balanced shunt. So these additional factors one should always see. Similarly, if you are getting a left to right shunt direction VST, if there is associated coarctation aorta, aortic stenosis, something like that, you will keep on getting left to right shunting, though there is a established pulmonary vascular obstruction disease. So uh, these are the preterm PDA, this is everybody gets it. And uh, there, if you, uh, you are getting this kind of picture, definitely this is a hypertensive PDA, right? These are the hypertensive PDA. But if you see this one, here you can see the, this is the systolic diastolic more than two third is diastolic uh, pressure difference. So this is the uh, restrictive PDA. If it is, if you see here, here the, it is moderately restrictive and here you can see the bidirectional shunt, right? And uh, here also you can see that, uh, so these are the, this is the best actually, okay? So uh, here you can see the both places, the gradient over here, this is the systole, and uh, this is the gradient over here, and this is the, uh, this is the gradient over here. So, so this is a patient, See, if it is this kind of thing, rail, uh, train on the, on the track. This is train on the track, this is best. So this is a restrictive PDA, mild. But if it is this, uh, I mean, there is a difference between this pressure and this. Uh, almost this is uh, arriving up to two third of this pressure, no? So it's fine, it's a restrictive PDA. But here it's little moderately restrictive. It's uh, and this one is totally large PDA, bidirectional shunt. Okay, this is also almost bidirectional shunt. Aisen Mangani, ye to bache pe, pre term pe na. They are pre term. Pre term. They are pre term. So this is a 17 year old child presenting with this kind of, uh, he presented with the PE picture in fact. So this is what it is. So you can see multiple, uh, uh, multifinestrated is the, everybody can make it. No? <coughs> so this is multifinestrated. Um, now tell me is it a, this is a PE picture. So is it a, uh, is it a hypertensive <coughs> ASD or it's a no, uh, normal, I mean it's not a hypertensive. ASD, or it's a small shunt. So uh, the thing is turbulence is very important. It's not very turbulent. So it says that RALA pressure are almost similar. And the second thing is um, actually this is, huh? huh? So there are multiple ASD because individually one ASD is not big. They are small because multiple are there. So there is equalization of pressure on two sides. So this is a significant uh, ASD, but it's still it's left to right. Ah, Hannah, this is left to right. So <coughs> now you have to see the RARV dilatation. So uh, what I would like to say that ASD, like in a Eisenmenger VSD, LA, LV are, if they are normal, are in a PDA, are in a AP window, you will think that it is going towards the Eisenmenger in the older child. But in ASD, it doesn't happen so. 
in ASD, you get RA, RV, PA dilatation. But if it, even if it is Eisenmangerized ASD, you will still have dilatation, rather more dilatation, because RV failure starts establishing. Okay, so this is what it is. So uh, that's why you don't see any change in the picture of the X-ray and ECG. This is uh, 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 yeah, this is the AST uh, interventricular septum paradoxical motion. Everybody saw it. This is the uh, hypertensive uh, suprasystemic RV, and uh, this is the D. You see, if D is there, then you think that RV is suprasystemic. So D J D. So pulmonary hypertension you can make out by TR gradient, by PR gradient, by this acceleration time which I have shown you. Dr. Neeraj actually shown you and Dr. Munesh also. So this is, is the parasternal view. We have seen that, huh? okay? So these are the way you, you can assess the PA pressure. This is also a very important uh, pulmonary, you can see a notching. So this is also suggest a pulmonary arterial hypertension. So uh, whenever you are looking at uh, diastolic uh, PR, PR and diastolic pressure, you have to add the RA pressure. RA pressure you get from the IVC size, IV collapsibility. And the mean PA pressure, PR peak gradient, and you have to add the RA pressure. Then uh, ventricular, uh, right ventricular, left ventricular, basal diameter ratio, flattening of interventricular septum, I showed you, that is D. Pulmonary artery, I have shown all those things. So, <laughs> so this is how you do it, uh, uh, the QPQS. So you have to take a, this over, uh, you, you get a annular size and then diameter, and you get a PW over here. And you have to just put it, put it in a in calculator. So you get your QPQS, right? Both in the aortic, uh, aortic and the pulmonary valve. So annulus you have to take from here to here, here to here, PW, PW, VTI, you have to record VTI, and then you have to put into your calculator, right, okay? Then this is the, similarly almost you can get the cardiac output also, that you know, because being adult side. So if left to right shuntage happening, it will be, it will cause dilatation of respective chamber because flow through atrioventricular wall and semilunar wall is dis disproportionately high to the size of valves, that's why you get a murmur. X-ray chest AP and left lateral view will show respective enlargement of ventricle and atria. ECG will also suggest chamber enlargement. <coughs> you know that uh, overall procedures can be done corrective. Mostly they are correctable and that's it. Any so question? If
ਕਹਿੰਦਾ ਬਟਨ ਦੇਦਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੋ ਥਿਸ ਚਾਈਲਡ ਇਜ਼ ਐਸਿਮਟੋਮੈਟਿਕ ਨੋਨ ਟੂ ਹੈਵ ਸਮ ਸੀਐਚ ਡੀ ਐਟ ਐਂਟੀਨੇਟਲ ਸਕੈਨਸ ਐਂਡ ਰਾਈਟ ਨਾਓ ਐਸਿਮਟੋਮੈਟਿਕ 5 ਮੰਥ ਓਲਡ ਚਾਈਲਡ ਐਸਾਨੋਟਿਕ ਨੋ ਸਿਮਟਮਸ ਸਾਈਟਸ ਸੋਲਿਟਸ ਆਈ ਵਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਨਾਟ ਡਾਇਲੇਟਿਡ ਡਿਸੈਂਡਿੰਗ ਆਰਟਾ so we do the descending aorta doppler this is the descending aorta doppler anyone is aware of the importance of descending aorta doppler yes no anything else reversal of flow must be neutralized ha huh? who is the neutralized here ha huh? we will discuss about reversal of flow also but yes something else coarctation of aorta so when you see a, a, the doppler trace which is pulsatile you have ruled out coarctation most of the times a reversal of flow when does it happen pda yes hematoma significant pda when you reversal but it's rare phenomena you know i have rarely see a even a significant pda you will not have reversal in the descending aorta uncommon phenomena so again i am going with the subcostal view uh, possibly pfo pulmonary veins i am seeing in the in the la pfo is left to right what have we ruled out by saying pfo left to right what reasons we have ruled out no tapvc and tricuspid atresia so okay now uh, going to the lvot this is the this is the lv this is the aortic valve lvot and then as madam was telling you when you go further anterior you saw rvot so this is the lvot and i go further and till i start seeing the rvot can I, can you appreciate this yeah. this further and till movement is in the smaller children actually i will go the color now so this is the lvot and this is the rvot and they are crossing to each other by saying crossing what we have ruled out tj very good so now four chambers i am focusing on the mitral valve no mrms tricuspid valve nothing ivs i will focus on the ivs further but uh, i don't think there is there is shunt here let us see the apex also sometimes as sir has told apical vsds are commonly missed but a large vsd is uh, difficult to miss you know then i will go to the uh, here also you know that the view the four chamber view yes in four chamber so this is the four chamber okay now okay five chamber and now i go in the same plane a slight sternum and i see the rvot see this yeah you understood this part so lvot and then slightly i go near to mid midline and see the rvot is basically short axis view in the <coughs> lateral lower view yeah so i now come to the short axis view i will focus on the veins also by i forgot actually here but uh, 2d gains actually yeah uh, uh, let me let me do it okay this one yeah, yeah. so branching i have seen the bi bifurcation of pas and there is no pd in the lpa lp or rpa both yeah this one no no ps acha acha gussa nahi gussa nahi now we'll go to the long axis one thing i admire in your your skills because <laughs> you are getting children found thank you thank you mam wo mam mere baal ud chuke hai ab so this one i also was saying long axis you go posterior you see inflow and then you go anterior you see the outflow so inflow by posterior movement outflow by anterior movement understood and now if you want to see the chamber dilated or not by the z score i think this is normal but uh, all of you when you have doubts you do the m mode and z score parameter has to be used understood that part has to be clear so you have to know the weight and height of the child which yeah. yes because you how would you know otherwise what tells you uh, yes otherwise how would you know leave it leave it i yeah. simply if you realize this look at the flow velocity if the flow velocity start increasing somewhere at some point that gives you an idea something is happening here. yes so i will go to arch uh 
arch is okay. So this is the arch. Uh, uh, if you want better windows, let us no, no, wait. No, 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 yeah, no, this no, is the no, arch. No, no, no. So because my probe is on the left side, so this is the left arch. So I have long axis view. And this is this arch now. There is no coaptation. And uh, uh, okay, short no, axis, he will not allow me. No, no. Savi is female. Female. Yes, she is female. Okay, uh, I will try to see the coronary arteries for the for the audience, if I can. So whatever shunt, so what are the shunts which were diagnosed in fetal life? What are the possibilities? Which is close by five months of age? V S D and so this is the the coronary artery you can see. <laughs> so you know in fetal life you can diagnose V S D, but small V S Ds are difficult to diagnose because of equalization of pressures, RV and LV pressures are equal. Small VSD you can miss, color flow will not be seen. Then ASD secondum, uh, all fetus have PF1 secondum ASD, so difficult to differentiate between PF1 and ASD in fetal life. Sinus venosus, difficult to pick up. You can pick up primum ASD very easily in fetal life. What about PDA? Any comments about PDA in fetal life? Normal. So how do you pick up PDA in the fetal life? PDA ka full form care? What is the full form of PDA? Patent. patent. So patent after birth only, no? So you can only diagnose after birth. Before birth, it has to be patent. So you can't diagnose the PDA before birth. This is shunts, you cannot pick up before birth. You can't diagnose. Okay? So most likely, if they are saying some hole was there, I am talking about VSD. Primum ASD will never close. They will never close. So primum ASD will be surgical repair always. And a PDA you can't predict before birth, ASD you can't predict before Why? birth. So it must be VSD only. Then you can find the Fine. Adult coactation of aorta has come. I was saying yesterday. So we did it about a week back. She had come with a 100, 200, 110 systolic blood pressure. She's about 45 year old lady. Hmm. And the only catch point for that lady was she was having le left ventricle hypertrophy. Hmm. And the aortic flow velocity was also increased, like hmm. outlet syndrome. So, so that was the only catch point. Yes, that was the only catch This is my old uh, presentation and uh, I am repeating it and it's a small presentation I promise. So you people will not sleep. <laughs> so <coughs> so uh, VSD. Uh? Thank you. 
So uh, mostly the you know name of what are the names of VSTs classification. Uh, so uh, this is a uh, uh, eco evaluation of ventricular septal defect. Uh, we know VSD is the commonest thing and uh, around 40, 50 percent of the VSDs may go into Eisenmenger syndrome if they are large and if they are treat untreated. So uh, the classification hemodynamic and the morphological consideration uh, and the type of classification is all based on the right side of uh, when, uh, right right side of interventricular septum and anatomy why because surgeons did it so as they access the uh, ventricular septal defect so they found it whatever way and they diagnose they made classification in the similar manner so uh, this is a post trike assertion a uh, large defect will have same LV, RV and PA systolic pressure, we talked about that. Uh, however, PA mean and diastolic pressure will be lower than one third of systolic systemic pressure leading to increased QP QS ratio. That is more than 1.5 is a significant QP QS ratio and patient present with the congestive heart failure, but we know that this is not a normal congestive heart failure. Uh, and there is no LV systolic dysfunction, but it is a high output failure. So, uh, hemodynamically significant, if a, there is a small VSD, most of the time unless some other complication happens like endocarditis or like uh, like aortic val valve prolapse they are usually innocuous and I told you what is the in the relationship of aortic annulus you can measure the size and of course we go by other factors also just say LV IDD Z score LV uh, LA aorta ratio and thank you so much LA aorta ratio and and uh, VSD gradient and uh, so those are the things which we have to see and of course x-ray ECG. We have seen ECG, we have seen x-ray and we learn how it will be pulmonary arterial hypertension, how it will be significant uh, LV enlargement. So uh, moderate VSD is a good uh, uh, murmur is there, it is real classical murmur that pan systolic murmur. And, uh, there will be, there may be cardiomegaly, mostly if it is moderate then it has to be a cardiomegaly and uh, I am not going on system, the clinical findings. The large VSD will present with cardiomegaly, sometimes you may not hear a real systolic murmur, a grade 2 or grade 3 murmur over RVOT that is a flow murmur and the uh, rumble at the LV apex. So, uh, large VSD with Eisenmenger syndrome, we learned that the S2 wide and variable split goes off and P2 becomes very loud and the even murmur goes off. So, uh, checklist what suggested by Dr. Neeraj and Dr. Munesh. So, I am going, I am skipping this slide. Uh, this is the inner uh, uh, place you see. So, this is how it is. Uh, you can see what is this? This is a tricuspid valve, okay? And here you can see the aorta coming out from behind, but it is not connected to this place and this is the pulmonary valve. So, this anatomy should imprint on your, uh, your brain, then you know that uh, here somewhere here in the vicinity of the aorta and this tricuspid valve, if this particular area is deficient, then you may get a perimembranous VST 
if a deficiency is over here, this is a saddle shape crystal supraventricular disc. So, the, here you can get a gap between the uh, LVOT and the uh, RVOT. So, that will be an outlet muscular VST. This is pulmonary valve and this there is aortic valve and if you get a aortic valve is actually behind this. So, if it is gap over here, so you get a doubly committed VST. This is the classification you all know, right? And then all this area is free to have many holes and those are the mus muscular VST. So, what is the definition of muscular VST? Uh, muscular VST is that where you get a all muscular margin. So, that is a muscular VST. What is a perimembranous VST? Anterior superiorly there is a aortic valve behind is uh, behind is the uh, behind is the tricuspid valve. A inlet VST, inlet VST is between the mitral valve and tricuspid valve inlet area. So, inlet area is which area is inlet area? Basically around crux where the atrial septum meets. So, mostly inlet VST is seen where atrioventricular septal defect. So, uh, uh, you see there so that is a true inlet VST where actually you do not get any muscle and there is a continuity of the right and left sided leaflet actually they are bridging leaflet. But in a inlet VST isolated there is a difference, there is a superior fibrous ring, there is little muscle. So, that is a true inlet. So, inlet VSDs are mostly muscular VSD only, they are very high up and they also have a muscular margin, right, okay. Then gradient we talked about that respective VSD if it is more than 60. We, we should be always careful about taking systolic blood pressure. A patient having the 150 uh, blood pressure and here the gradient is 60, how much will be PA pressure? Huh? Yeah. So, one has to be very careful that there is no aortic stenosis, no coarctation aorta and no systemic, uh, systemic hypertension, right? Uh, so, these are the famous, uh, this uh, I got from Dr. K. K., our teacher Dr. Uh, Krishna Kumar, wonderful teacher. So, this is how you go for all the, this all shown by Dr. Neeraj, so I need not to say anything. Doubly committed, I said that the roof is formed by both aortic and the pulmonary valve. So, that is the doubly committed VSD, uh, subcostal sagittal view may you can see like this over here, huh? this is pulmonary artery and actually you will open aorta and you will see again VSD. So, because uh, this is there, but if you see in the plaques now, this is very important. <coughs> this is the plaques view. Uh, normally, perimembranous VSD you don't see in this view. If you expect perimembranous VSD in this view, probably you will not able to see because when you go, little uh, probe goes uh, towards the uh, right hip. When it goes little inward, right hip, partially towards the tricuspid valve opening the partially tricuspid valve, then you see the perimembranous VSD. If you are looking at VSD at this particular view, you should think of doubly committed VSD also or maybe outlet muscular VSD. So, but if you go little up towards the left shoulder, this is my probe, this is my, uh, what, uh, this is my probe and if I go like this, then you see the pulmonary valve opening up and then you see the this uh, uh, aortic valve and if anything is happening over here, see, can you see? This is the VSD which is outlet VSD actually, subpulmonary VSD or doubly committed VSD, right? You, you see this is the continuity, this is called continuity of uh, pulmonary valve and uh, aortic valve. Had it been their muscle over here, it would have been outlet muscular VSD, right? Okay. Am I clear? So, this is the area where uh, aortic valve is there and aortic valve is very notorious to plunge into VSD. So, doubly committed VSD is most uh, famous for getting this plunge in. 
So, uh, that is why even a, a small doubly committed BSD, we are very careful about evaluating aortic regurgitation, if uh, even mild aortic regurgitation, we offer surgery. I am clear? Khana bolte chalo bhai, neend aari hai vaisak mein. मैंने अभी बताया आपको आप एक होगा सुप्रा क्रिस्टल ये सब बहुत सारे हैं अब आप है ना बस ये याद कर लो इतना ही कितना पेरी मेम्ब्रेनस वीएसडी यू आर फाइन विद दैट हाँ डबली कमिटेड वीएसडी इज आल्सो नॉन एस सब पल्मोनरी वीएसडी दैट इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एस सुप्रा क्रिस्टल वीएसडी राइट तो नाउ यू नो पेरी there is a doubly committed VSD where it is placed, pulmonary valve, aortic valve, right? Just below that. Then others are inlet, inlet VSD and rest of muscular VSD. So inlet VSD will be around crux and the muscular VSD anywhere else. Outlet muscular VSD, after all is the outlet mus muscular VSD. Those things you cannot help it. You have to define whatever is you are primary. looking at. What is main primary VSD? Huh. It's an extensor device. Whatever you are looking at, you have to describe it. A big inlet area VSD you are seeing and little bit in sub, uh, you can say inlet area extending into perimembranous. Or you may say that a small perimembranous VSD extending and getting large and in going into inlet area. Ultimately, your surgeon must know now what you are writing and that should be, what you are writing it should be correct, right? So, you should not be very um, uh, like uh, uh, thrifty with your work, huh? right? So, this is, this is a uh, parasternal short axis view cell biogram. वही मैं देखूं तो वो चल नहीं रहा है ना यही तो बात है हाँ भाई देखो हाँ या बताओ जल्दी जल्दी बोलो लिखा भी तो हुआ है so you should know that this is a short axis view agreed agreed now this is what is this? Tricuspid valve. What is this? This is right coronary sinus, huh? right? So is there any VHD over here? No. So perimembrane is ruled out, right? Then it is going towards this. So now we have two options. One is outlet muscular VHD and second is doubly committed VHD. Now you see, uh, if you can see, uh, what is there? So if you are see running, so it is just in vicinity of pulmonary valve. Yes. So you agree that it's a doubly committed valve, right? Sir, uh, नहीं सर रेस्ट ऑफ मस्कुलर वीएसडी वो सेम ही क्लासिफिकेशन है सर I told, I told the uh, same. Uh, yeah. Actually, so I explained. This is what is the most convenient classification. Otherwise, it's a very confusing part of remembering. Yes. So, so uh, sir, one thing I disagree with you. The cable outlet muscle of ESD, the rest of the IBS, in any muscle, in any hole, that is muscle of ESD. So, that has been classified as perimembranous, doubly committed, muscular and inlet. Exactly. That is correct. Outlet muscular is part of muscular. So muscular. Because here what is happening like you are looking at three VSD type. 
what are three one is the perimembranous vsd second is doubly committed vsd and in between the outlet muscular vsd but there are other type of vsd like in apex if you get a vsd that is also vsd that is a muscular vsd right a vsd in the inlet area that you cannot look into this only you can get it in four chamber vsd so that is a inlet if sir what is saying i am saying same only thing is a uh, muscular vsd whenever all margins are muscular that is muscular vsd that could be a, in any place and out, outlet muscular vsd uh, probably i will show a picture of that also so uh, then this is a very important uh, thing and you can see the aortic valve prolapse this is the prolapse which happens in the doubly committed so we are very uh, this makes lot of issues because you get good gradient over because your half the hole is closed mm -hmm. right but because this aortic valve is deformed so this will start regurgitating and it's like putting your uh, your limb your foot in the jaise wo dal dal mein rakh dete na to aap usse chale jate ho to waise ho jata hai hai na so this is prolapse with aortic regurgitation and this is you can see the gradient is 98 so it is hemodynamically insignificant vsd but is still because prolapse is there so ar yeah. so uh, then uh, perimembranous vsd boundaries i told you antero superiorly aortic valve and the postero inferiorly tricuspid valve and it is a very central position you know you can see the very centrally placed uh, <coughs> and this is a vsd over here so this perimembranous vsd has option to get closed by the uh, by this growth of interventricular septum or maybe tricuspid valve tissue arising from over here and covering it so this is this area a vsd can be seen which can close also partially by tricuspid valve leaflet or uh, this uh, interventricular septum and uh, uh, it may be so so i i told you here you cannot see in a perimembranous vsd you don't get any vsd over here but <coughs> when you go inside then you see the vsd that i told you huh? so is same thing nothing new huh? right <coughs> this is aortic valve prolapse right okay here uh, this is again see same picture which the sir was talking about this is pulmonary valve aortic valve here you get doubly committed vsd this is outlet muscular vsd this is perimembranous vsd so this is the uh, here you can actually you should you need to learn to recognize the aortic valve prolapse because when aortic valve prolapse sometimes happens so that a doubly committed vsd may seem like a perimembranous vsd a doubly committed vsd may seem like a perimembranous vsd because partially it is closing whole Uh, three fourth of VSD. So in that case, you will uh, think that it is a small VSD. Why to be bothered? It's a perimembranous VSD. So this becomes very difficult. So you should know that whenever this aortic valve prolapse is covering that area, it's very thinned out structure compared to muscle. Muscle has some depth, some thickness. So if it is there, then uh, you should think about the. See in this case, th so you can see thickness. Can you see? this is a thickness huh? so this is a perimembranous uh, vsd and then you see the la ye i told you la aorta ratio and lvidd z score and see here i told you uh, this again that you get a you get tricuspid valve tissue can uh, see this is coming and going so these kind of tissues they may not be uh, this may this may not be 
very protective actually. They are coming and going, they are not sticking over here, so that's why you have to see the whole size of VSD, the uh, gradient of VSD, and the uh, whatever else secondary parameter. Uh, you want to any ask anything about the perimembranous VSD at this juncture? Anything? Perimembranous VSD? What I said, perimembranous VSD is placed between the aortic valve anteriorly and tricuspid valve posteriorly inferiorly. It has a tendency to close only in 20 to 25 percent. It will close by the growth of interventricular septum or by the tricuspid valve tissue, right? Uh, so, uh, and it, it may be a cause for acquired garbode defect because of this aneurysm formed by tricuspid valve tissue, you get a direct connection between the LV and the uh, RA. So that is how it is, and PA pressure is measured by the uh, VSD gradient, and uh, QPQS is uh, assessed by the LA aorta ratio and the LVIDD Z score. Right? Fine. I'm clear. Hello. Hello. Uh, so uh, next thing is. Uh, mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. So uh, another thing you we need to know the surrounding structure. Most important is the outlet septum which may go anteriorly or may go posteriorly. And uh, like in this particular case, uh, there is a posterior malalignment of septum. This will create lot of trouble. Patient may go, may need for second uh, intervention because LVOT obstruction will create at the moment uh, VSD is closed. So, uh, these uh, VSDs, perimembranous VSDs, are being uh, often ad uh, nowadays advised for device closure also besides surgery. Because, but in that particular case, first thing, QPQS should be high. And second thing, there should be a good rim. Uh, I, I think this is the, you can see, this is the rim. There should be a good aortic rim so that you can put. And ne Dr. Neeraj does a lot. Huh? So, I have done this one, if it can play. Edu 2. Huh? Edu 2. Edu 2. <laughs> but I am not very fond of this. Uh, so, I am I, I am little conservative, but okay. So, this is the outlet VSD, outlet muscular VSD, what Dr. Gupta was talking about. So, here you see the margin over here between the pulmonary valve and this VSD and this side also you get muscular and muscle uh, is there. Uh, so, yes. 
आई थिंक जो जी एस टी का जो बेस है आई थिंक यू प्लीज आस्क क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो सो दैट एवरीबडी शुड कीप ऑन कीप अवेक सो दिस इज द मस्कुलर वी एस डी वट आई सेट की ओनली थ्री टाइप ऑफ वी एस डी कैन बी डिटेक्टेड इन पैरा एक्सटर्नल शॉर्ट एक्सेस व्यू बट इन द रेस्ट यू हैव टू गो फॉर ए स्कैनिंग इन द रेस्ट ऑफ इंटरवेंटिकुलर सेप्टम and you can see that th this is the classical swiss cheese uh, and i am sorry for this glitch okay and the these are the smaller vsd in the apical portion you get multiple tracks of the vsd they were famously called as uh, swiss cheese small holes so that is how they are they may be in isolation they may be along with perimembranous vsd they may be also with the none of them will run ye wala to run kar gaya ha so those are the small vsd hai na so they seem so benign but they are not benign because they are in multiple planes and they create lot of uh, uh, shunt this is doppler data ko to gradient mein gradient you can't get gradient over they are certain like normally what i said vsd or pda you have to calculate pa pressure by taking gradient across the shunt lesion but there are places where actually those shunt lesion are not giving the right uh, information and tricuspid presence of tricuspid regurgitation or pulmonary regurgitation is important <coughs> to assess those uh, pa pressure like in a muscular vsd so many time a small muscular vsd you are getting gradient of 35 you will say it's a hypertensive vsd but it's not because it will look like a bidirectional or something wherever you keep probe it is left and right shunting through color coding is very mischievous at time because your probe angle changes and your uh, direction changes so that's why in those cases if you have a tr if you have a pr please uh, use that alignment to assess the pa pressure because alignment is not there he is right yes. Sir, this is like there are pa pressures all the world across the vsd in all sectors yeah exactly there are few problems sometimes you have pm vsd that is only to rn you may overestimate the pa pressure so that that factor has so uh, now the second thing i i thought it should be here but i i just see the sometimes this vsd is like a wedge because uh, it is uh, like lv then because there is little overriding of uh, vessels and then you get a middle part and this end and this end so that is also there but i don't want to talk about this but i think i have a garbode acha you can have also what it may be very small we as we are happy that okay too early this thing but patient may land up with the endocarditis so any congenital heart disease has the biggest enemy <coughs> is the endocarditis because whole natural history can change then sometimes it may present with the uh, lv dysfunction and there this may be because of condition like in this case alkapa doctor Uh, Dr. Neeraj asked you that what color it should be in LED over there when he showed beautifully that this LED. Era. But here you can see what color is this? Uh, so this is alkapa. So this can. So you in congenital heart disease you should never uh, you should never believe that one diagnosis exclude other diagnosis. But rather more chance of having the additional thing like bicuspid aortic valve, like PDA, like alkapa. I don't know. So these are the muscular VSD. I was trying to show it in 3D. Uh, so no, today is not my day. I am very sure. <laughs> Morning, sir. 
these are the post it was very interesting one day i'm like i got i was registrar and i was given a patient co-optation of aorta smita admit kar lo or smita isko wo kar do and kal surgery ke liye jana hai then i did this echo and interestingly i started from very uh, well, like religiously subcostal window uh, in first view jo dekhte hai na wo mujhe aadat hi dekhte hai ki i was so surprised to see this much big vsd it was around 10 mm vsd just in the posterior ventricular septum so dr neeraj ne dikhaya hoga aapko ki kaise banate hain wo views to inlet vsd ke jo इन इनलेट एरिया के जो वी एस डी होते हैं वो तो दिख जाते हैं पर थोड़ा और पोस्टियर हो तो यू कैन मिस वी एस डी यू एर सेंग दैट लार्ज वी एस डी कैन नॉट बी मिस दे कैन बी मिस सो एनी थिंग कैन हैपन एनी थिंग कैन हैपन सो दिस इज सब कॉस्ट एज मल्टीपल मस्कुलर वी एस डी है ना ये मिस हो गया सर्जरी के लिए पेशेंट चला गया फिर बाद में सो क्लासिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकल
function test x-ray electrocardiogram there would be a situation when information gained by these investigation will lead to clinical decision when echocardiographic finding are equivocal. I do not want to quote any example, but Dr. Neeraj knows, Dr. Munesh Chali. Mm. <laughs> Chal. So, kal kar lenge na. So, uh, uh, they, everybody knows that uh, uh, that clinical exam may change your uh, change your diagnosis management plan completely. So that is so important. Never think that echocardiography is going to give you wholesome diagnosis. No, right? Dr. Smita, one more word you used for a VSD was hypertensive VSD uh -huh. and one uh, comparative term with that also. Can you explain that again? Yeah, <laughs> hypertensive VSD and one more word you used for VSD. Respect to hypertensive VSD where the uh, hypertensive VSD is same where the uh, uh, diastolic uh, mean and the systolic pressure all the three are high. They are almost equal to systemic. Okay, I told you that uh, the systemic uh, uh, pressure will be same for the pulmonary artery and the uh, 